you are listening to the Schmooze <laughs> with Yael Shoshani Mapsuta, I'm a happiness mentor. And I'm Toba Goldman, creating content that is humorous and inspirational to give your day a lift. Join us for the Schmooze! So, today's episode, we're going to talk about Quantum Leap versus Chuck. Oh my gosh, okay. So, so we each had homework to watch a series that we never watched before. That's right. I had never seen Chuck. I'd never heard of Chuck before. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Elle had never heard of Quantum Leap. And let's talk about it. Interestingly okay. enough, we both chose um, shows that were geeky people, <laughs> nerdy people. Yeah. So that was interesting. What do you think about geeks, like in general? Um, I worship geeks. Yeah, I know! First of all, I have to say like a personal, uh, we do, how do you say we do? Confession. Confession. Um, all the people that I had crushes on, they were like geek types. Me too! <laughs> me too, me too, me too. No. I wanted to be a geek if I wasn't like, I wanted to be part of their geeky clubs and they never invited me. So if I wasn't invited, I wanted to marry somebody who was geeky. <laughs> Um, I, I just, I never had the, I could never figure out, you know, like these little equations and these little beta, meta, alpha, alpha, blah, blah, blah. So they never invited me to join their secret sorority clubs or, you know, their secret clubs. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, totally. So it's when yeah. I find somebody who's a geek and he's also cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's, there's a, those kind of geeks that are sort of like very detached from the world. Right. And... The, that's very hard to communicate with him. I, I dated once a guy like that. It was like a totally math guy. And the only thing we had in common was like we liked uh, Walt Disney cartoons. So... I guess you didn't end up marrying him. <laughs> no. And it was like around 9 o'clock he says, I'm tired. I want to go home to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, so there are different kinds of geeks, and right. and I think we chose like really good looking geeks. Oh yes, for this series. Yes, yes, and yes. They were good looking. Not so much detached from the world. You know, they they sort of have like an interaction, some kind of an interaction with with the world. And right. maybe these shows, what happens is like from a world when where your comfort zone, mm -hmm. and they both are in their comfort zone. Let's let's like say a little bit about each show okay. and because maybe our, our viewers and our listeners don't really know what we're talking about so okay. i'll talk about quantum okay leap. and i will talk about chuck okay so quantum leap is a scientist that he's like he has all kinds of phds he knows all kinds of languages he's like really really brilliant and he invents this time machine and he activates it and he finds himself in each show in a different era inside somebody else's body and interacting with this people and, he, and there's always something that he has to fix okay and you talk about and Chuck. Chuck was this uh, brilliant guy who got cheated out of life because um, his best friend um, decided to um, put him under the table and it turns out that he was it was for his own good and whatever um, but even though he's so detached from life and he ends up working in this like nerd mall um, as a as a geek technician, um, he he retains that goodness in him, and and you see that in the first episode where he you know there was that girl with the ballerina, and the guy didn't tape the show, and he just sets it up, and that was just it was just like it shows the goodness in him. Yeah. Um, I think he was a little bit detached. From yeah. The world. Yeah. He, he was detached from the world, and then what happens to him? He becomes like he has a supercomputer in his in his head in right. his mind. He becomes a super guy, <laughs> and he can able to do things. And then afterwards, the, the it's taken out of him, right? It's taken out of I him. I think so. I don't remember the end, but uh, and then but, it's put into into Sarah, and, into into the CIA spy. I guess. Um, it was about this, you know, mega nerd who falls in love with this beautiful woman, and this beautiful woman falls in love with him. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's just such a beautiful message because, you know, there's always things about us that we are insecure or shy about. And we don't always think that we can get the girl or get the guy or get the dream job or get that full potential that we really want. And this show just showed 
you know, it, it is possible. Okay, yes, it's Hollywood and uh, whatever, but um, I think it yeah. did show that it was yeah. possible. You know, you can get that dream, whatever the dream is for you. Yeah. Um, and he he is also, like, forced into a world because he has to, like, leave his comfort zone or really expand it. Right. And um, I think both shows show us about, like, situations in our own lives that we don't leap in time or we don't have like a supercomputer in our brains but many times we have to enlarge our own capacity oh God, yeah. to to deal with whatever life throws right. at us and and it does feel like that like we're disoriented right. we don't really know what's happening we try to figure out what people around us want right. <laughs> I feel a little bit like that now with my yes. daughter being engaged. Oh my God, Mazato, Mazato, this is incredible. Yeah, so, so incredible. meeting a new family right. and their standards. And right. my, my daughter says yesterday, she says, uh, they need gifts. I'm like, what? And yeah, uh, gifts, uh, show off gifts. Oh no. <laughs> so we were thinking, what, what, what can we get, you know? So she goes like the usual stuff, and then I say, "Okay, how about a new helmet for his, um, no, motorcycle? Ooh, nice. that could be nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. So, so it really gets you thinking like out of the box. Right. It really gets you opening up your mind. It really gets you trying to figure out. Like, sometimes you have to figure out your own relationships, right. even the regular relationships, even the regular ones. Yeah, you have to like figure them out again and redefine you them." Redefine them. I think that when once you do that though, once you get out of your comfort zone, you become a better person. Right. You know, you become a totally better person. We just had this course with um, Muslim women, and you know, at first it's like, oh my god, they're gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm not, I'm not sure that they still won't. Um, but you know, once you get out of that fear or out of that box out of that comfort zone and you expand it you become a new person and you become a better person yeah you know and then you have all these experiences to fall back on and right. it, it just it makes you um it, it it allows you to be um to try new things more to try more new things because you have that oh okay i've already tried it and the world didn't end yeah so it's okay you know yeah. and and getting out of that comfort zone um yeah. and, and sam in quantum leap he did that every week yeah you know he Every week he had to become somebody else, a new person. Every week he had to, you know, try on lipstick or, um, um, or, 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 or become like an assassin or become a, there was an episode where he became, you know, like you said, he has these, all these degrees. He became a mentally retarded person. Oh, wow. And he had to, um, act like he was mentally retarded and, 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 and that just, you know. And I think the more you try to become a new person, the more you experience new things, you you just become a new person, and then you're you're less yeah. But fearless. also, there you're, there you're less, is something there is something of a continuity in your identity yeah. in both shows, right? In both shows, like the basic you stays, <laughs> and and that's something that that really um, stands out. And for me, it sent me thinking about our neshama, our soul. Ooh. How, oh, wow. first of all, we return each morning to our body right. and how grateful I am for that. <laughs> Not and to and anybody else's body. Oh my God. No. <laughs> you know, if we would have to be Sam, that oh would be really driving us nuts. Right. And he's sort of like, I think the key for him not to go nuts. You know, mm -hmm. just to accept that this is now my life. Right. You know, also with Chuck, he, he's like very, very overwhelmed with what happens to him. But right. when you accept the whatever it is, the new consequences that you are in, then you can you can deal with it better. Right. But I think that that's a really big gift that that Hashem gave us the continuity totally. of our soul. That basically totally. we are us. Right. Right. <laughs> you are you. And I am me, <laughs> right? And um, but what what quantum leap really made me thinking of also in the context of of our soul is like reincarnations, wow. and that wow. it's a very Jewish concept. What right. happens in that show that 
your soul is here to fix something. Right. And once you fix it, you can move on. <laughs> Oh, wow. And um, I think it's a beautiful way of thinking about life and death mm. because most cultures, like uh, Western cultures, deny death. Right. We all we all want to stay young. We all want to stay healthy as long as we can. Mm -hmm. And old people should be put out somewhere outside of our eyesight, or whatever. If you were uh, most old people, maybe not all people, all old people, but most of them, it's like existence is to the young, no, and no. it's not true. It's not true. It's not, so true. not true. If you were a reincarnated soul, who would you? Where would you be? What would, what do you think? Who do you think you were in past lives? Oh. We're going really deep here. <laughs> well, I'm sure one of my reincarnations, I was in the Holocaust. I'm sure of that. And it's not such a great memories, I can say. No. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> but I've had, like, dreams when I was a kid of running away and hiding. It never ended well. I always got caught and shot. <laughs> but um, but if I think, like, further further back. Oh, wow. So wow. I think my soul has always come here to do something good, like in the shows. like in the, right. Exactly like in the TV shows. Yeah, you know, you come here to make something better. Say, make something better about the world. Make something better about yourself. Right. Make something better for other people that you interact with within this body. Right. And um, and I think definitely, I'm sure one of one of my past reincarnations, I was a healer. Ooh. I'm sure of that because it's no mistake that in this one, I I I am a healer. Right. And. Um, but I think there was a lot of sadness. I think I carry a lot of uh, a lot of sadness with me, and that's why in this l lifetime I'm a happiness mentor. Because nice. I'm paving the way out of that for for the next generations as well. Oh wow! wow. <laughs> I went deep. Oh wow! You did. You did. You did went deep. I don't know if I want to come back. Like I don't. I think my soul is very tired. So I think I've been here so many times. I'm just, I'm just yeah. tired. Die. Let me do what I want to do. Or let me do what I'm supposed to do. And finish. It. We're finished. We're done. Die. Yeah. Um. I, I. What do you think you were? I was totally in the hot glass. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Um. I have this like recurring nightmare. I guess I was a young mother with little children, and I had. I was there, like, yeah. totally, like no doubt about it. Um. Which is why, like, I would never go to Poland, never, I, I watch Holocaust shows, I, I get nightmares. I'm wow. like, nope, nope, yeah. nope. Um, but getting back to Chuck, okay. um, in season five, so Sarah gets the chip, and then she doesn't remember um, who Chuck is. Oh. Um, and, and at the end, um, the, the, last, uh, the last scene of them, and she's, the whole season, she's doing something to harm him. And he, he's going, what? Like, this is not... And, and she has to keep her cover and she has to um, uh, pretend that she's the same person. And and so at the end, it comes up that she doesn't remember him and she doesn't oh, feel yeah. anything for him. Oh. And so they're sitting at the beach. Um, they're sitting at the same beach where she initially told him to trust him. Um, and she, so she's sitting there and she says, you know, I don't remember. I don't remember. And, and she says, well, tell me a story. And he starts telling her the whole story of Chuck and Sarah. And then, and then she says, well, you know, okay. And, and their whole thing was, you know, kiss me. So she says at the end, kiss me. Okay, fine. So he kisses her. And I think that, that she was willing to give him a chance. Uh, she was willing to take that chance on him, even though she didn't remember. She had no idea, identity of self. She had no memory. She was willing to take that chance on him and say, okay, you know, there's that essence of goodness that I sense in you um, and I'm willing to take the chance even though I don't remember and I'm willing to take the chance to create new memories wow. which was just you know like how many times do we want a second chance how many times right. do we do something stupid right. how many times do we do something that oh my god I wish I could take back and um, and this was just the opportunity to you know press that reset button yeah you know, yeah. and I wish there were so many times and so many things in my life that I could just reset and go back and redo. Yeah, but you can't really go back and redo, but you can like create new memories. You can right. 
create like this is a new starting point and uh very symbolically mm. um like me and boaz when we were married like for seven years we had a really bad time together and we seeked help and i was uh by a healer for like six months wow and like just to improve our relationship to start out you know and then we got to really start over because uh when my sister was um hit by uh terrorists by terrorists and she was in hospital so we got into this whole thing with ketuba that the ketuba wasn't written right and wow. we had to fix it so we got remarried we had our new ketuba rav remarried us <laughs> wow so that oh was like God, that's a little scary yeah that was like a new beginning wow that was like a new that's beginning beautiful. And Do you still celebrate the day that you got married? No, because it's two days before Pesach. Like the new days. The new the we we got married three times. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have like no, we have three um, marriage dates. So the first one that we got married was like a few days before Rosh Hashanah, New Year. Okay. And then, uh, like two or three days before Passover. Oh my God. That was when my sister was in the hospital and we, we had a new ketubah and a new ceremony, everything. Like we had witnesses, we oh had the whole God. thing, mamash. Yeah. I even went for the mikvah the same night. It was totally consequence. It wasn't uh, planned. And so we did That's that. Insane. <laughs> and then um, a few years back, I decided that we never celebrate our wedding day on time. So I created a new, new one. <laughs> And I dressed up in white. Bravo, yeah, fair. <laughs> we chose a day where uh, it doesn't clash with, nice. with anything. Oh, no holidays, events of, no, um, no school events, nothing. Advanced so, preparation. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So that's that. But um, really giving yourself a chance and, mm. and believing also that's something that Rabbi Nachman teaches us that... Um, Every day is a brand new day. Every minute is a brand new minute. Right. We That's don't... Awesome. I mean, we live a lot in the past. We think that our past is controlling our present. our present and our future. Right. But it's, not, it's true. So not true. The past is in the past. The past forms who we are. But it doesn't... It shouldn't control us. But, yeah. But, yeah. Um, okay, which episode of, of Quantum Leap did you like? <laughs> Well, I th- I love the one when it, where he becomes a woman. <laughs> I love that one. I didn't see it to the end, but um, you know, dealing especially like a woman in the fifties, I think it was okay. or something like that. Um, it it really stands out Beautiful. how women uh, were treated bad right. and like an object, mamash, right. a sexual object. And to stand up for yourself, to, to, to become, to, to say I'm a woman and I'm entitled to whatever it is I'm entitled to. It was like so radical back then. And he, he does that because, you know, first of all, he's not from the same era. He's not, he's not in the mindset. And also he's a man. Right. And, you know, at some point he's like, I'm not going to be talked to, to like this. I'm not going to stand for this. And... So I love that. That was awesome. Yeah, I like the one. I don't know if you saw it, but he um, he was a he he leaped into a black man in the early early fifties in in South America in the South of America, the South. like Mississippi, yeah. and he was hungry, thirsty, and he goes to sit at the white counter where only <laughs> whites are allowed. And he was you know he was this old man in the seventies. He didn't know who he had leaped into. Um, and, and the stir that it caused around, you know, that old southern town in America, in Mississippi. Um, it was just a beautiful show of how it really was and how and, and the injustice that was there. Um, that was that was just a very powerful episode that I remember. There were a few scary ones. Um, he leaped into Lee Harvey Oswald. Oh, I didn't see that one. Oh, yeah. I don't want to see that No, you don't want to see that one. It's a really scary one. Um, and, and Chuck, Chuck, there were just so many great episodes. It was, 
like, how did I never hear about this show? <laughs> how did I never hear about this show? This is it was such a great, um, great character building, great episodes, great like corny humor. Yeah, um, I don't think there was an episode that I didn't like. Right. I liked all of them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go back and watch it. You have lots of action. You have lots of um, also the side characters. Yeah, they're hilarious. Oh, Morgan, Morgan is starting. Morgan is great. Jeff and uh, the guitarist, the the two nerds that work work with him. Mm, yeah. Oh, they're they're, they're so fun. funny. They're fun. And Big Ed and like all and awesome, mm-hmm. Mr. Awesome, Mr. his uh, brother-in-law. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. It's, it's, and he's got such an amazing um, support cast. Yeah, you know, like like he goes in and he really fights, and there's all these amazing people supporting him, and you know, just down to earth people having a good time, and and that's that is so awesome, and I think that's what you know Sarah looks at and she goes, oh my god, this is this is the type of life I want. I want friends. I want normalcy. I want um, I want people to support me. I want to come home to a home. And, and that's also like such a powerful message. You know, he's on this shooting star to be the next uh, great CIA spy. And she's just going, I've already lived that life. And it's not so great. It's very empty. Um, and that brings up, you know, like how important family is, how important friendships are. Um, I don't think I would be able to survive without my friends. And eventually your friends become your family. Right. Your good friends. Yeah. You know, your good friends <laughs> become your family. And um, it's, it's so important to have that network around yeah. you that, yeah. you know, supports you, that loves you, that can k- give you the kick in the butt, you know? Yeah, also. <laughs> when you need also it. Also that. Um, and, and I think that's just so powerful. Also, Sam, he, back home he had that, you know, on, on 1998 or wherever it was. Um, he had this support group, but he also had Sam, you know, uh, Al, 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 sorry, Al. Yeah. Um, he had Al with him, and Al was proved himself to be such a good friend. Yeah. Like, yeah. wow, you would want a friend like Al. Yeah. You know, wherever you go, he can tell you what you're doing, where what you're supposed <laughs> to be doing. What's happening? Yeah, yeah. And, and give you that <laughs> kick in the butt when you need it. I, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. I think also one thing that, that stands out for, to me about Al, it's like a holographic mm-hmm. person. So, like, for a person like me, when um, when I get, like, messages from above, it's like, that's the kind of experience, you know? And people around me will not see it when I'm, like, sort of talking to somebody that nobody it's right sees. Right there, right there. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, talking but, to yourself. But, um, but it, I, I do believe that the realm again i'm going into the realm of the soul is is very close by it's not as far as we we believe you know sometimes people have a message for us sometimes god has a message for us and we if we just listen we'll we hear it listen. and it's there yeah i mean yeah. it doesn't it's not something you can grab onto <laughs> right. but but it's totally there we we have like this voices that we can hear and it's not that we have to hospitalize us because no. we hear these voices <laughs> i don't know i feel very brave talking about this oh my god yeah we're gonna be like you know shipped <laughs> off to the psych ward but, but like a, it's like um it's like a very deep voice yeah. inside of you right and it um it tells you it, it's like my not only my moral compass but my my and my ethical compass, but my, my compass it tells me where to go, like what the next step is. Like sometimes you, you don't know, you're, you're like feeling in the dark yeah, and you don't know what the next step is. And yeah. you know, that voice just tells you one step at a time and, and you know, you can see the next light, the next path, right. the next direction, the next step. Um, and usually it's always right. Yeah. It's always right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just don't always listen. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's like in the parsha with Bilam, with, uh, you know, the God tells him, don't go curse uh, the Israelites. And he's like, oh, I want to go anyway. curse them. Yeah, and it, then anyway. God says, okay, if you're so persistent about it, go. But I'm going to tell you what to say. <laughs> and then he puts blessings in his mouth. Right. So I think in any event, 
Ooh, good that's comes a out. good analogy. Like Balak and 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 uh, Bilam and uh, like Sam and Al and Chuck and and that whole scenario. Oh, I like it. I like it. And good will always triumph over evil. <laughs> Like so it. we're coming to an end. We didn't think about what we're going to do next week. Mm. So do you want to do like... Let's uh, ask our listeners what <laughs> they want to listen to and what they want us to talk about. So you guys, it's up to you what you want us to talk about, what show you want us to analyze. We will talk okay. about it. Okay. Okay. And we will see you next week yeah. on The Schmooze!